Hey guys, I'm Leah Nicole. If you're new, welcome. Um, I know I've been gone for a minute, y'all. Like, I know. <laughs> I've been gone for about a month. And, you know, I was just dealing with a lot of things behind the scenes, just with my personal life, but I'm good. My spirit is good. Me and God is good. I'm at peace. I'm happy. So thank you guys so much for sending your love. Um, I saw all of you guys' comments on Instagram, on YouTube, like, oh my God, where are you at, girl? But I'm here and I, I was definitely transparent with you guys about like, my little disappearance so um but i'm okay i'm good um i'm just happy to be back where like i'm comfortable i love sharing these cases with you guys i love bringing awareness for the families so we're gonna get back to work today um so for today's case we will be talking about a 19 year old girl who moved to miami florida because she received a new job to pursue her dreams of singing but soon after, she will become a victim of a dark scheme, causing her to fear for her life and go missing. This is the case of Natanali Perez. They gon' find you, catch you sleeping, ooh, 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 stay woke. Natanali, or known as mainly Natty Perez, was born on October 19th, 1992. Natty grew up in Sebring, Florida, and was mostly raised by her aunt Maria Mattel. However, she was still very close with her mom Anna and sister Mary. She grew up with a loving and supportive family, and a fun fact, Natty also took her faith very seriously. She made sure that her relationship with God was a number one priority, which I thought was pretty cool to know. She was described as being sweet, humble, and very talented. Now, when Natty graduated from high school, she had dreams of making it as a singer. Like I said earlier, she was very talented. It wasn't hard to miss. So she decided in order for her, her dreams to come true, she was going to move to Miami. She had thoughts about moving to New York too, but she felt more comfortable staying in Florida so she can still have that closeness to her family. So in 2012, Natty moved to Miami with the support of her family. Now one of Natty's friends told her about a job posting and that they were looking for singers in Miami. So this was something that Natty was very excited about. Like she felt like this would be a stepping stone to start her singing career. So when she first moved to Miami, she was settling in, keeping in touch with her family. She expressed to them how happy she was for this new season in her life. But after a few weeks, something seemed very strange with Natty. She stopped posting on social media and her family barely could reach her. And when she did answer the phone, her answers were very short and it seemed like someone was telling her what to say. So after days of no response from Natty, her family for sure believed that something was wrong, but they weren't sure if Natty was just exploring and doing her own thing. Some of Natty's cousins that actually lived in Miami expressed to Maria and Anna that they saw Natty hanging around in the city one time and she was around a group of people that weren't good influences. They expressed that when they saw Natty, she wasn't acting like herself at all. Like she seemed extremely uncomfortable. So her aunt Maria called the Miami Police Department right away and she expressed that something was wrong with her niece and that she might be in trouble. So police were like, okay, we're definitely going to look into this. Now, Maria actually volunteered to share the phone calls she had with Natty over the week to police so that they can really get an idea on why she was really concerned. So police were able to listen to the phone calls and they agreed that it seemed odd, but since Natty was 19, she was considered an adult and they didn't think her case needed an in-depth investigation and they pretty much just dismissed the whole thing. Meanwhile, Natty's family is concerned because she left to Miami excited, wanting to pursue her dreams, and all of a sudden, it's like Natty just 
drifted away and they didn't even have conversations with her about her singing job at all like they didn't even know any updates about you know how her singing career was going um when did she start her job when is her first show like they didn't know anything about natty when she moved to miami but it also seemed like natty was trying to stay away from that topic for a reason now we know miami is a big city and even though we see the beaches the cultural food the nightlife there is also a dark side of miami that people often overlook at times especially for young girls we can't overlook the drugs prostitution sex trafficking and other dangers that might come around if you're not careful or alert so after weeks of Natty's family not hearing from her, Natty finally managed to text her aunt and stated that she needed help ASAP. So Maria asked her sons to go search for Natty and bring her back home to Sebring from Miami. So when Maria's sons were able to find Natty at her apartment, as soon as Natty opens the door, they noticed that her hair was torn from her scalp her nails were ripped back and her body was bruised. She was shaking and terrified and it was very evident that she was clearly beaten up by someone. So when her cousins asked her like, hey, you know, who harmed you? What happened to you? Like, let me know what's going on. She refused to talk to them. So at this point, they were extremely worried about Natty. And when Natty arrived back home to Sebring, the rest of the family noticed that Natty was so fragile. Like this wasn't the same Natty that everybody knew. All they could do is really just comfort her, calm her down and show her love before, you know, they got to the nitty gritty about what really happened to her. So throughout the day, you know, Natty confessed to her family that she was actually being forced into sex work. She was having intercourse with multiple guys and it was actually being filmed. She had been lured in by an ad in an article, which was the same ad that was advertising a singing position in Miami. So when Natty arrived for an interview, they somehow forced her into sex work. They kept her in the Fanta Blue Hotel and advertised her on the website Backpage. Backpage was a classified advertising website founded in 2004 and it was very much similar to Craigslist. Backpage um, let their users upload ads to categories such as personals, automotive, rentals, jobs, and even adult services. And I believe Backpage is now actually shut down for numerous reports of human trafficking. Natty also expressed that the men she was with that was forcing her to do inappropriate things made her call her family and say that she was fine and happy. So that explained why her family thought things were very weird from the start because every time they called her, it was like someone was coaching her on what to say. Like they were almost speaking through her. Natty also expressed that she was drugged up and beaten when she wouldn't, you know, go along with what they said. Natty, you know, alleged that her clients would often be incredibly rich and powerful men who would take her to have sex with them in expensive hotels. They also dressed her up in designer clothes, shoes, and jewelry. This was very terrifying for Natty because she didn't want to be killed, so she just went along with it anyway. She also described that some of the other girls she met there was forced into this as well, and some were from other countries, but a lot of them were also American girls from small towns, and they were also beaten, drugged, and even starved to do certain things. So when the Perez family heard the heavy news, they were devastated and told her that she needed to go to the police right away and report everything. But Natty didn't want to. She said that many of her clients were actually cops and one was a judge. 
So she was extremely hesit hesitant about what they could do if she reported them. And she didn't want them to, you know, harm her family as well. Like she was really fearful that if she put herself out there to the police, that these people would not only come after her, but her family as well. So after the family, you know, expressed their love and care for Natty, later on throughout the day, she was able to just relax for, you know, the night and really just rest her mind with everything. But later that night, Natty's mom heard her talking on the phone and she noticed that whoever Natty was talking to on the phone had her really troubled and frantic. She believed that the person on the phone could have possibly been one of the traffickers. So after a few days, Natty confronted her family and told them that she had to go back to Miami. So of course, you know, the moment her family hears this, they're like, oh, head to the no, you're not going anywhere. Like they're extremely uncomfortable about this decision. But Natty expressed to them over and over again that she had to go back, like she didn't have a choice. Like there was no way out of this. Natty eventually told her family, quote, they may touch my body, but they can't touch my soul. Natty then packed her bags and left the house. That was the last time they ever saw Natty or spoke to her again. The Perez family never stopped trying to look for Natty after that day. They really wanted her to come back home. The family eventually, you know, reported her missing again, and they actually went to Miami to look for her. Maria eventually, you know, met with a Miami detective who told her that it was reported that Natty was last seen on June 1st, 2012 at the Burks Motel in Miami and that she was apparently living there. Detectives shared with the Perez family that the easiest way to find Natty at this point, if she was arrested for prostitution, then they will have a lead on where to find her. Her family tried to call Natty multiple times to see if they could get a call back. But of course, they received no answer from her. Anna expressed her concerns and frustrations. She stated, quote, either someone has her or they did something to my kid. But I mean, if people don't talk, this is going to be a never ending story. There's people out there right in my town. They know what's going on because they took my daughter to Miami and they knew exactly what they were doing when they took her. The family also hired a private investigator and worked with the Anti-Predator Project and with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children over the years to find Natty Perez and to really just bring awareness. But as of 2022, there has been no signs of her. Atanali Maria Perez was 5'1 and weighed 130 pounds when she vanished. Today, she would be about 29 to 30 years old. It's very unfortunate that we had such a beautiful and bright girl just wanting to follow her dreams, but got caught up into this dark scheme and was pretty much tricked into being trafficked. And I believe even though Natty made it back home to her family, she could have for sure been threatened every day by the men that got her into this and maybe that's why she went back maybe they told her hey if you don't come back we'll harm your family you know we'll do all types of things and she pretty much just sacrificed herself but it's really sad that she didn't think she had a way out because she did so we're definitely going to pray for natty somewhere in this world father lord god that she comes home safe and we're definitely going to pray for peace for the perez family father god i just come to you and i pray for the perez family i pray lord god for peace and healing through these times these devastating times father lord god all of these years lord and they still can't 
get in contact with Natty. They don't know where she is, Father Lord God. I pray that you make a way. I pray that you open all the doors to get Natty back home, Father Lord God. And I just pray for their peace of mind. I pray for healing and comfort, Lord God, because you know what they're going through behind the scenes. And Father Lord God, wherever Natty is, Lord, wherever she is, I pray, Father, Lord God, that you protect her, you keep her safe, and you just get her home, Lord. I pray that you definitely get the right investigators to touch this case and to really help out with this case, Father, Lord God. Anybody that's trying to block, you know, the truth, we cancel it in the name of Jesus, Father, Lord, Father, Lord God, because you can make a way out. You can do all things because anything that's in the dark will always come to light every time. So, Father, Lord God, we thank you for peace. We thank you for healing and we thank you for comfort, Father, Lord God, during these times where the families of these victims are hurting. But that's why you're here to provide that you're here to provide peace never-ending peace so we thank you father lord god in jesus name we pray amen thank you guys so much for watching this case don't forget if you have any information please contact the miami police department at 305-603-6300 for natty perez and i will see you guys in the next case bye they gonna find you at you sleeping, ooh, 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 stay woke.